Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the USO MVP, that is Military Virtual Programming. My name is Chris Jacobs, and I'm honored to be your host. Wherever you are joining us from, I hope that you are safe and healthy and happy. And if I said wax on, wax off to you, would you know what I'm talking about? If you do, you're obviously a fan of The Karate Kid and the subsequent TV show, Cobra Kai. It is my pleasure to welcome our guest today, the executive producers of Cobra Kai, Josh Shield, John Hurwitz and Hayden Schlossberg. Gentlemen, welcome to all of you. How are you guys doing? Hello, everyone. We're excited to be speaking with you today. To all the members of the U.S. military out there, we'd like to thank you for your bravery and your service. We appreciate everything you do. And let's welcome in the two actors that we just saw there, Ralph Macho and Yuji Akamoto. Guys, please join us. Great to be here. Thank you. Ralph and Yuji, I want to uh, ask you a question right off the bat. Why is it important for you guys to join us today on the MVP series and participate in entertaining our troops? Well, listen, it's, um, it's uh, a, a, an opportunity to reach out, to connect, to, uh, to say thank you, to um, send our, our love and support to the troops and, and sort of talk a little bit about our show and, and have the opportunity to uh, hopefully bring some smiles to faces because uh, we know the, the great work that's being done. Eugene, how about you? First of all, Hi, Sai, everybody in Okinawa. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. It's such an honor. The USO does so much for the military. Uh, the support programs you guys provide are so invaluable. You keep the troops connected with the most important part of their lives, and that's, that's their ohana, their family. For me, that is huge, and that's just part of what you do. I, I can't think of a better way to spend my time than to spend it with the heroes who serve our country. Thank you so much, USO, and thank you to the troops who keep us safe. Well said, Yuji. Thank you for that. Ralph and Yuji, guys, how does it feel to receive so much critical acclaim and also fan appreciation from around the world? I mean, this series is just an absolute hit. Well, it, um, you know, it, it succeeded expectations for, I mean, I always felt walking in these shoes for decades upon decades upon decades that that there was that sort of fandom and fan love for this for this uh movie franchise and to see um it be embraced in this way in every corner of the world and and supported and sort of has that element of nostalgia but yet due to john josh and hayden's great vision and all the collaborators to come together to make Cobra Kai, we now have, have broadened that even further and uh, into multi-generations and, and multi-ethnicities and, and um, many languages. It's, you know, it's the cherry on top, it's the cake and eat it too. We are the chosen ones and I will pass it to chosen from here. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue. Um, no, it... <laughs> It is awesome. I, I'm just a small part of this Cobra Kai world, and um, but I tell you, I'm I'm so blessed just to be part of this. Um, thank. I just want to thank the guys uh, for bringing back uh, uh, Chosen to have some some closure to this character. But I'm so I'm so happy for um, the Cobra Kai family. Uh, for all the success that they have, and, and hopefully it'll it'll just keep keep continuing. And question for Josh, John, and Hayden. Uh, you know, of course, these Okinawa characters come from Karate Kid too. What was your inspiration for writing these characters into the storyline for the third season? You know, we love all. We tend the to look at oh. the. Oh, this you is what it. happens when we don't. You go, uh, Josh. You go. <laughs> first. Talk at a time. <laughs> We look at the whole uh, Karate Kid universe, really, you know, the, those those first three movies, even, you know, not not even the the Hillary Swank one, but also the the next Karate Kid as any movie that that Mr. Miyagi uh, touched, you know, in terms of his his presence uh, being felt, uh, whether on screen uh, and with our case, you know, off screen, except for uh, for flashbacks and creative uh, license from time to time in terms of filling in some blanks, but that we don't distinguish between, you know, Karate Kid 
one, two, three, four, uh, in terms of where the story is going. It's all just kind of things that happened uh, in the backstory of the characters that we're writing for now. So that might mean that, that we're pulling something from you know the third movie in the same sentence or in the same episode where we're pulling an experience from uh, the first or second movie. But that, that trip, that journey that Daniel and uh, Mr. Miyagi took in that second movie was so magical for, for us, you know, as kids, it was the first time we were experiencing uh, a little bit of that culture as, you know, we were, we were rather young and um, less worldly in our, in our suburban New Jersey uh, environs. So it was, it was just kind of an eye-opening experience for us. Um, and it would have felt inauthentic and a massive loss for our series if we weren't able to, you know, start to revisit some of those, uh, those storylines in the present day. Aiden, John, you want to add to that? Yeah, no, I would just say that, uh, you know, we we all loved The Karate Kid too. Uh, we all fell in love with Kumiko and we all feared Chosen. Uh, you know, he was uh, uh, a scary, scary dude. And, you know, to bring those characters back and bring Daniel LaRusso back to that part of the world and for the first time to actually film in Okinawa was a special thing because in Karate Kid 2, they filmed in Hawaii. So it was a really special experience for all of us. Working with, uh, with uh, Tamlin and Yuji uh, was amazing and their performances uh, are, were huge highlights of not only season three, but the series overall. Well, guys, talk a little bit about that, Ralph and Yuji. Shooting in Okinawa, as John was talking about, versus shooting in Hawaii must have been a really cool experience for you, especially because that is where Mr. Miyagi hails from. Right, yeah, it was. It was a big, big win for the production, the series, and certainly personally for me, uh, the guys and, uh, and Sony Television were, you know, uh, figured out a way to get us on, uh, get us over to the other side of the planet. Um, as as her, her, which John would always say to me, I mean, we have to get Daniel LaRusso to Okinawa. I mean, it's ridiculous Daniel LaRusso hasn't been in Okinawa. And Daniel LaRusso meaning uh, Ralph Macchio, I guess. And, uh, and because our lines blur, but it was, it was, it was so special to me um, to be there with Eugene. Um, obviously, Pat Morita no longer with us, and such a big part of of the Karate Kid universe and Cobra Kai as well. And um, you know, so keeping that legacy sort of present and and feeling that, and we felt that when we were there. Um, we I felt that in those scenes. I felt Pat's presence and Miyagi's presence in those scenes with Yuji and with Tamlin uh, as well. And that was, you know, that's like other layers and levels of, um, of relevance and importance and sort of spirit of why we're all here and, and uh, making this, this show that is touching so many people uh, and from so many different angles. Yuji, what was your experience like in Okinawa? Yeah, it was incredible. Uh, the thought of even filming in Okinawa was probably the furthest thing in my mind. Um, when we shot that first scene, it was at the Matabaru observation deck. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it literally gave me goosebumps. Um, not only was it an incredible shot, but you know, it added so much uh, to the scene that could probably have never been captured on a set in Atlanta. Um, I think uh, the, the biggest coup is the, the fact that Okinawa was the birthplace of uh, Goju Ryu Karate, which um, the Miyagi-Do style was based upon. So to me, it was, it was just a really special ex experience. Mm. That's really cool. Guys, we have several live locations that we're going to be going to during our session. And the first one is ready right now. This is Kinser Elementary School. We've got some students there who would love to ask you guys some questions. How you doing? Welcome. Hi, good morning. Ohio gozaimasu. Hi all. <laughs> Welcome to Kinzer Elementary School. Um, I'm Miss AJ Arden and I loved you and my cousin Vinny too. Okay, so um, <laughs> I got to give some shout outs this morning. Okay, so welcome to our school. We have just over 200 students. I am the information specialist, aka librarian for our school. And we are the only school that is right on the water. So welcome to uh, Kinzer Seaside School. And here are some of our fabulous students. Uh, just so excited to see you all. Thanks. All right, who's first? Introduce yourself and what's your question? T. 
He's coming. <laughs> Hello, welcome. Hi, <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> What's your name? What's your question? My name is Tohira Burba, and my question is, where did you film in Okinawa? Oh, where, well, Yuji, you just mentioned um, one uh, of the yeah, it was the Matabaru observation deck. That was where we had that first initial meeting and talk. And then uh, we went to uh, the Daisegi Rinzan, which is part of the Yambaru National Park, I believe, where they had all the banyan trees and ferns. Yeah. Um, we had the, the scene where I walked down with him and, and we exchanged the uh, scroll. And uh, we got a chance to go to Naha. Yes, we did <laughs> so have a chance to go to Naha. I think you shot uh, other places that I didn't. Well, just a little bit. I mean, we, we did some uh, driving shots and scenes like that. But those those two locations that Yuji mentions were the main locations. We had virtually only two days there. And one of them was a beautiful sunny day. This picture behind me, if you could see, was on the day. And that's Miyagi Island out there somewhere, right? Um, and I got uh, it right here. Uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then the the next day, the weather was less cooperative, but um, still still uh, beautiful. You know, it was just uh, wonderful to experience the island and and have a piece of that in in our show. It was a, a big win. And we got a beautiful shot of uh, Daniel coming down. In escalator in the airport which is a must-see location uh, in any city is we go to the <laughs> we film we film the escalators thank you very much for your question appreciate you who's next please step up introduce yourself and ask your question hello 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 madison cobria my question is, why did you decide to make another film where Johnny and Daniel are adults? Uh -huh. Why? Well, maybe um, I guess one of the guys, one of one of the, the three creators can jump in and I can piggyback that. Well, I'll just I'll just say, you know, when we were your age, um, we were huge fans of The Karate Kid. It was one of our favorite movies. And, you know, Johnny Lawrence with his blonde hair and that Cobra Kai black gi was very scary to us as kids. And then as we got older, we were very curious, you know, what that character was like. And we became writers and directors. And we thought, hey, you know what, what if we found out, like what happens to those, those bad kids and bullies from your school, you know? Usually things don't turn out well for them. And then maybe later in life, you know, suddenly, suddenly Johnny is, is not in a good place and he's the underdog. And Daniel, meanwhile, is, uh, went on to bigger and better things and the roles get reversed and we suddenly just got into the story and we're like, oh, we could bring the Karate Kid back. And uh, that was sort of the, you know, the original idea. Yeah, and I, I, I'd been, um, you know, over the years, I would get uh, people, writers, people in the movie business saying, well, how could we do this again? How could we bring these characters back? And there was never an idea that, were, that seemed fresh. And there was never an idea that, that didn't seem like it would pale in comparison to the original uh, concept, where, where when John, Josh, and Hayden came with this idea, it, you know, it took me a little while to digest it all. But at, at the end of the day, it was a smart and, um, a uh, unique way back into that world that seemed to have the opportunity to work 34 years later. And boy, were we all right, <laughs> at least to this point. It's been, uh, uh, it's been great. So far, so good. Thank you very much for your question. We appreciate you. Who's next with a question for the panel? <laughs> My name is Ursanubi, and my question is, how long did it take you to learn karate? What was that again? How long did it take you to learn karate? Uh, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still learning. I, am, I don't think, um, uh, for me, I don't know if it will ever be over. It's just like anything. It's, it, it's never done. It's only abandoned. You can keep nurturing and, and honing your craft. Um, it, I certainly uh, 
got into it when I first started with the movies and then I didn't keep it up as much and I am paying for it a little bit now, but working very hard season after season uh, to get better and better. Yuji? Um, wow. I, uh, I took karate back in uh, 72, 74. Um, that's 1972 and 72. It's a long time ago. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but um, my, my style that I studied was uh, Chitoryu, so I took it for a couple of years. And um, yeah, I took some uh, judo in college. Uh, as far as how long did it take me to learn, um, I mean, it's one of those things where you continue to learn and continue to evolve. So it's a matter of keeping it up. You have to stay with it. Um, I started training again. Um, so I can stay in shape and, you know, um, it's, it's a, it's an ongoing process and, and you never stop learning. So that's, that's, what's important about continuing with not only karate, but also with, uh, education, you keep learning. Thank you for your question. I know we have a couple more there at Kinsler elementary school. What's up buddy? What's your name and what's your question? My name is Christian Hampshire. What inspired you to do Karate Kid and made you want to make uh, Cobra Kai? Um, for me, what inspired me to do Karate Kid is first I got the part. That's one. That was one piece of inspiration. And working with um, uh, our director John Avildsen, uh, who directed that that movie. He did a, a big movie at that time. Before that. <laughs> Called Rocky, that was very big. That's the, that's the school bell. Last, last door. Underscore. Just playing you off, Ralph. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nope, everybody, class, remain in your seats. We're not done yet. <laughs> so, um, so I was inspired by the creators of the uh, of the original film and uh, and working with Pat Morita as Mr. Miyagi and, uh, and William Zapka and Elizabeth Shue and all the great actors I got to work with. And in Cobra Kai, it was about um, um, reconnecting and extending the story, finding new ways to pay homage to what we did uh, at the, you know, back in uh, making the films and then carry that forward. And it's great to see the younger generations and students like yourselves sort of embrace this show and then learn even more about the movie and keep that legacy up in the air. So that is highly inspirational to me right now. Thanks for your question, pal. We appreciate it. I think we have one more there at Kinzer. <laughs> Hi, my name is Christopher Lee. And um, why did you decide to bring back Chosen from Karate Kid 2? Uh, I mean, first off, I love the Ohio State Buckeyes, so you're winning me over right away. <laughs> um, uh, hardcore Cleveland Browns fan, so I'm, I'm, I'm liking you already. But um, ultimately, I mean, I, I said before that when we were kids, we loved uh, Johnny Lawrence. Or not loved, we feared Johnny Lawrence uh, when we watched The Karate Kid. When we saw The Karate Kid Part Two, it was Chosen was the, the new bad guy. And he was even worse than Johnny. He seemed like he had even more skill. And so he was just uh, one of our favorite characters from the Karate Kid uh, part two and thought about him for years. And so when we had the opportunity to get Cobra Kai made, we were really hopeful that we'd have a couple seasons to, to be able to reintroduce that character to the world. And we wanted to show, you know, a character who uh, was a bit rough when he was young and, you know, uh, did some bad things and that, you know, somebody like that may have a chance to redeem themselves and change their lives for the better and become a better person in time. And, you know, collaborating with Yuji on the character and really digging deep uh, was, uh, was so much fun. And, uh, you know, we know that fans really enjoyed watching uh, Chosen evolve from uh, the boy that he was to uh, a better man later in life. Thanks to everybody there at Kinzer Elementary School. We appreciate you guys participating. Thank you. Thanks very much. We hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, Thank you. Josh, 
John and, and Hayden, uh, you guys mentioned, you know, you're, you're wondering what happens to Johnny later in life. I got to say the montage in the very first episode when Johnny is driving around the valley reminiscing about the tournament as he sips out of the bottle is worth the price of admission. I think I've watched that scene a hundred times. Amazing. Oh, thanks. Thank <laughs> you. Kudos on that. That was the very last thing we shot in season one. We were all sitting on the back of a truck dragging the car or watching Billy do that with, I think it was Hayden on the walkie-talkie into the car saying, take a sip, clench the wheel, look out, <laughs> shake your head. <laughs> All those little things. Was, it was, it was, like Rocky. Midnight like in Ventura Boulevard. All right, going to go to our second live location right now. We are going to go to Katina High School. How you guys doing? Welcome. Hey. Hi. Oh, hi, from Kadena hi. High School. My name is Chris Kwitek. I'm the principal. We're located on Kadena Air Base. And I want to thank you guys for the opportunity and turn it over to our students who are really excited to get to know you a little bit better. Thank you. Who's first with a question? Step on up, introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Grace Lynn Melton, and uh, I was born in Okinawa. And as a young adult, I was wondering, is it possible to be successful in the film and or screenwriting industry without any college education? If yes, how difficult would that be? That's a great question. Um, you know, John uh, Hayden and I went to college, but none of us went to college for screenwriting or filmmaking uh, at all, with uh, very few exceptions. We didn't really have any classes um, in that because uh, there were very few offered at the time, um, and we were pursuing other endeavors. And screenwriting and filmmaking in general was so far off for us, you know, even living on the, you know, the East Coast of uh, the United States, I can imagine it feels far off, you know, living in Okinawa in terms of, you know, Hollywood is way over there. But really, it's something that you can learn, you can teach yourself, you can read, you know, you can read a ton of screenplays, you can read a lot of books about how movies are made, how to write a, you know, a television play. Um, and you can really start at the ground floor and immerse yourself in the, you know, the business in terms of surround yourself with education, you know, in hands on, whether it's an internship, whether it's, you know, working in the, the mail room or as an assistant at, you know, a place that doesn't pay you much money, but you're, you're, you're learning a lot of uh, hands on experience in terms of how things are done. And pretty quickly, you look around and figure out that a lot of other people don't really know, you know, what they're doing either. And you're, you're all just kind of learning a little bit at a time. And uh, over the course of, you know, months, weeks, years, you suddenly realize you're getting better, you're getting stronger, you're uh, whichever version of your craft you're pursuing, whether it's acting, writing, producing, you, you learn from your mistakes. Um, so I would say you do not need a college education in screenwriting or filmmaking to be a screenwriter or a filmmaker. Aiden or John, you want to add to that? I would, I would just say that, you know, if, if you're not going to college, that you'd still, uh, you know, reading and writing is, is very important. You know, whether you want to be a screenwriter or even if you want to be a visual director, you have to communicate. You have to learn how to talk to people. You have to, you know, know how to do that. And the best way to do that is through, you know, you know, reading, writing, watching movies, TV shows, if that's, if that's the thing that you want to do. And ultimately, you know, you have to have experiences, you know, you know, right from your own experience. Um, that's the most important thing is to be able to draw from something in your own life or your own imagination that people would be interested in. And, you know, from there, it's about, you know, just uh, motivating yourself and, you know, kind of Cobra Kai style striking first. And, you know, even if it's scary, you know, try to get that job interview or to write that script or whatever you got to do. And also you got a, a movie stu studio right here on your phone now, so. <laughs> That's true, great <laughs> advice there. Thank you, Aiden. What's our next question there at Katina High School? Hello, I'm Ariana Henson, and I was uh, wondering what are some challenges you faced uh, when you were filming the series? What, repeat that question? Challenges that you faced when shooting the series. Oh, um, well, listen, we, we operate on a, a pretty quick schedule and uh, these three wonderful writers here write more and more bigger and expansive scenes and fights. And so we, 
the challenge, some of the challenge is uh, keeping up with what's on the page. Somehow we always deliver it. Um, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it gets, it gets, as the season goes on, um, we wind up having to catch up more and more and make sure we deliver what's in the frame, what's in the camera frame. That's all anyone sees. No one knows everything else that goes on. So it's, uh, it's uh, challenging to maintain consistency from the acting side and from the physical uh, side as well. And, um, you know, we're all driven to that and we have uh, a great, a great full ensemble of a cast um, and a, a very young cast as well, which inspires us not as young cast members to, to stay up uh, to the pace, you know. Um, and the reward that, that keeps driving us forward is, is how well received it is and how we also just enjoy working together. Um, it's such a great, it's a dream team, it really is. And everyone who comes in and out of the show, whether it's Yuji or Tamlin, or other cast members from the original Karate Kid films and new cast members that are created in the writer's room going forward. Everyone comes into this show, uh, at least from my perspective, <coughs> with a, a tremendous sense of pride and uh, they don't take it for granted. And uh, that's quite rewarding. So that makes the challenges a bit easier. Uh, producers, any challenges on the uh, production side? Oh yeah, I mean, I just <laughs> continuing with what with what Ralph was saying. I mean, we we have big imaginations. We have such love for the original films that we want to create this big sort of cinematic vision on our show, and uh, we don't necessarily have the budget to pull that off at times. So there's a lot of times where we don't get everything we need in a day, and we find ourselves shooting two full units per day, which means that, you know, Hayden and I are on one set directing a bunch of scenes uh, with, you know, Ralph over there and Josh maybe on another set directing uh, with Billy and some other actors. And you're filming, you know, the show in multiple locations at the same time because you have so much to do. The other great challenge is just weather in general. You know, we started shooting um, this season. We're in the middle of shooting season four right now. And when, when we started, it was, you know, uh, near, near the end of January in, in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and it's freezing cold and it's raining. And we're trying to make a show that feels like it's in sunny Southern California. So, you know, we're out there bungled up and then the actors have to, you know, uh, take off their heavy jackets and take off their, you know, face masks, uh, obviously in this particular time uh, and, quickly shoot and not shiver too much while we're filming outside in Mr. Miyagi's backyard. But, uh, you know, it's, it, these are tough days, but we all band together and, uh, and do the best that we can. And we've been thrilled that, uh, that to this point, people have, have enjoyed what we've done and we've been able to pull it off somehow. Great question there. Is there another one there from Kadena High School? Hi, I'm Sarah Grimley from Plain City, Plain City Utah. And my question is, what was difficult or challenging about filming in the island of Okinawa? Oh, um, well, Ralph and Yuji probably, you know, that, that last scene that they shot together, uh, you know, with that mountain behind it, um, you know, it's a beautiful picturesque location. But as we drove to the location, it was pouring rain, as I know some of you uh, some of you all know there's uh, some pretty big storms there at times and it was just torrential rain and i it, it got to the point where i told one of our um you know production assistants uh you know we need to get umbrellas and and maybe shoot the scene with daniel and chosen both having umbrellas in the scene because it was so ridiculously rainy luckily <laughs> maybe a little bit of Miyagi magic. I don't know, the rain kind of stopped. There's still like a drizzle. And if you watch that scene, you'll see the leaves blowing in the background and, and maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, that the hair is a little bit wet there. That's why, because it was uh, raining like cats and dogs. But the, uh, the, and also the wind, it was literally blowing sideways. And the, the, funny, the funny thing about it is when we were doing Yuji's not the funny, funny thing about it, but just the interesting thing about it. When we we're doing Yuji's close-ups, I swear the wind stopped and went around him. 
And when they did my close-ups, the wind was less friendly. But somehow, <laughs> once again, we edit it. Uh, uh, it comes together. You add the music. Uh, the performances are strong. Eugene was just so wonderful in that scene. Uh, all that stuff goes away. And you're in the eyes of these two guys and their history together and the sort of growth that they have as two characters um, and how one informs the other, each informs the other, um, all of a sudden the weather becomes uh, secondary. But we thought for sure, <laughs> there was no way we were gonna get that scene. Once again, we figure it out somehow. Ralph, that's that's the next lesson, by the way. Yeah, how to stop how, the wind. How to, yeah, how to move that wind. <laughs> how to, how to <laughs> have the, the wind move around you. I think we have time for uh, two more questions there. Who's next? Uh, hello, I'm Ada Mason, and my question is, uh, Mr. Amachio, did you do most or all of your such stunts yourself? And if so, what was the most challenging stunt to do? I, I've done, you know, back when I did the Karate Kid film, I did uh, most, I did all the fight scenes. Um, uh, there was, you know, one stunt when I get kicked down the, the, the hill there that I let someone else do those, that role. And, um, but for the most part, and even in Cobra Kai, as much as we can do, we, we try to do. Um, it's the most challenging. Um, there's a couple of kicks. And there was a kick in season two on the beach fight that I really worked hard at. There's some stuff coming up in season four that we're, we're shooting right now that we've just shot that really took a, an enormous amount of work. And, but I'm proud to say I was able to uh, do it pretty much all myself. Um, you know, it gets, it gets tougher as we, as I get older, but um, um, you know, you just, uh, anything that's obviously not safe. Um, you know, I was, I mean, there's a scene in, in uh, the second season where Daniel gets kicked into a flat screen television I chose to let someone else uh, <laughs> do that. <laughs> Time for one more question there, Kadena. Who's got it for us? Uh, I'm Diana Dunwalker, and my question is, what was the most difficult um, technical challenge you faced while creating Cobra Kai? The most difficult technical challenge, uh, just on an ongoing basis, is every time we hand in a script, producer who is in charge of uh, production and managing, figuring out how we are going to spread our resources across the season. You know, he loves to say to us, you know, you've written a, a lovely uh, season finale here and it might be episode two. Um, so we have very big dreams in terms of how much story, how many characters, um, how big the set pieces are, how big the fights are. And all of those uh, aspects um, really put a strain on the production, there's only so many hours in a day. Um, so really just technically, it's making sure that all of your departments that you're working with really care about the show to the degree that we do. And I'm glad to say that we, they do. We, we work with just an amazing uh, crew. It's about 200 people who you know, show up to, to make this show. And if they just were looking at their watch and saying, when's lunch, it wouldn't be the Cobra Kai um, series that you know and uh, hopefully are enjoying. Uh, it really is people who want to go the extra mile. And when we write you know, something, they want to you know, live up to it or even exceed you know, what we wrote and make it better. And that goes to our production design, our stunt department, hair and makeup, everyone just you know, really comes together um, to, to kind of make something that, that feels unachievable um, more achievable. And, you know, the closer we get to that, um, we are, we are able to, to deliver a version of what we've, uh, written for our pie in the sky, you know, money is no object, um, script, and then, you know, you deliver something that actually money is an object, but we came pretty close. <laughs> great question. Great answer there. Katina high school. We really appreciate you guys joining us here on the MVP series. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye guys. Thanks. Guys, going to check in with our next live location right now, and that is the USO office in Yakota. Guys, if you would turn your camera on and join us. Hello, how you doing? Good morning. How are you guys all the way from USO Yakota in Japan? 
Um, my name is Marty and I'm the center manager here and we're so excited to have you all um, as an 80s baby love the 80s montage music and stuff that you guys are happening so thank you so much for that. Um, USA Yokota is very special we have we house the 374th Air Force Wing, um, but we have service members from all walks of life. And today we have very enthusiastic fans. Um, these guys know everything about all the shows. So we have the questions ready for you guys, but thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. I'll start you guys off with my first question. Thank you. Thank you guys very much for joining us. Hello, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, I'm Tempest. Obviously big Cobra Kai fan, definitely more of a strike hard, strike first, no mercy kind of gal, uh, but <laughs> appreciate the Miyagi dough, appreciate it. Uh, but my question is, after playing these character, characters over a span of so many years, how do you really build that character development and make these characters relevant to these younger generations? Um, I mean, that's, you know, that's a question kind of for all of us. I said, from my perspective, um, you know, what's nice about the, the difference with Cobra Kai from the original Karate Kid is the Karate Kid story was very black and white. It was good over evil. You know, the Miyagi-Do was good, the Cobra Kai bad. And Cobra Kai, your allegiance can change character to character, episode to episode, sometimes scene to scene, sometimes within the same scene. And those gray areas and colors and complexities of character are uh, what um, distinguishes Cobra Kai, and uh, but never losing sight of uh, the homage and the embrace and the respect of of the Karate Kid, because without without um, all of that, we're not here. So I mean, that's some of the things that I I find and uh, rewarding. Awesome, thank Tempest, you. Question. Now go sweep the leg. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, everyone? My name is uh, Senior Master Velasquez, uh, station here. I just know that uh, I'll be moving to Okinawa in about three months, so I can't wait to, for that to happen. Um, like as mentioned before, this is very nostalgic. I'm very giddy about, about Cobra Kai and uh, Karate Kid and all that. Uh, it's because of you, Ralph Macho, that I took karate, karate lessons as a kid. Um, so Karate Kid 2 had one of my favorite action sequences of all time between uh, Ralph and uh, Yuji there. Uh, even to this day with all the CGI going on. But uh, what kind of training did you guys do besides uh, you know, the normal day-to-day -day karate? Was there any difficulty with the training? UG, you want to? Uh, sure. Um, well, for, for me, I had uh, talked about earlier, somebody asked me a question regarding that. And I had taken uh, Chitoryu Karate back in the Stone Ages. And, um, you know, when we do these, um, these, these fights and, and whatnot. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, there's a, you know, when we talk about choreography and, and, uh, the intent on, uh, the, the intent is not to hurt your, your fellow actors and stunt people, of course. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, that's, I don't know the, the basis for, for, for my training was, um, a hard style. Uh, Chitoyu is a very hard style. So for me, when I came into, uh, uh, when I got the, the role of Chosen, um, I, I was, I was kind of, I had some sort of foundation. So that, that kind of stuck in my brain. So that helped me to transition and remember some of these things. So um, in, in that sense, it, 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 was, uh, it was very helpful to have some sort of training before. Yeah, with me, I trained with uh, Pat Johnson, who was our, uh, he played the referee in the original Karate Kid film. Um, and he uh, trained me in the Goju style, the classic Okinawan style, me and, and Pat Morita as well. So that was always what I knew, the sort of working, the circular motions and all that, all what, what stems from the wax on, wax off and, and those painting the fence blocks and all that kind of stuff, the, the sanding, the floor that is still part of of uh, what's ingrained in what I do, and actually uh, that's more so what I do best. I guess after thirty billion years, you get kind of okay at it. But um, uh, more and more now, I am enjoying doing the katas and and things. I have a lot more even in season four that we're working on, 
and um, and and I'm excited. I think at this point in my life, I'm actually going to grab on to and hold on to it longer and for years and hopefully decades uh, to come. Um, whereas uh, back in the day, I did the part that the movie kind of hurts sometimes. I said, okay, I'll find another hobby. Um, and uh, but with Yuji, it never hurts. He knows he's got such great control. Those uh, those scenes were like little tangos and. We had a blast, uh, you know, for season three. Great question there. Thanks very much for participating. I think we have Thank one you. more question there in Yakota. How you doing, sir? Welcome. Hey, how you doing? Uh, well, how long time us? Um, well, for my yeah. time. <laughs> so, uh, just like everybody else here, uh, great nostalgia going on. You know, Friday Kid One, Friday Kid Two. Um, you find uh, Johnny's backstory. Um, kind of with this series, which whoever, whoever started writing all this, fantastic. I thought it was, it was very, very good. Um, my question is, um, with all of these movies, uh, what is, uh, excuse me, what is the biggest surprise bringing back all, all of the, the, the nostalgia uh, all from the movies previous before this? Hmm. Uh I think the surprise okay. for, uh, I'll just say for all of us, you know, making the show yeah. is just how quickly all of the performers were able to get back in character. I mean, it's been a long time. We have the nostalgia for these movies, just like you do. And, right. you know, uh, so much so that we took our imaginations and started writing this very high end fan fiction of where these characters are all the years, all these years later. and. We went around town and we had to pitch the show to all these studios and networks and and convince people to put up all this money to make the show. But these actors hadn't played these characters in so many years. So it was such a, so I remember our first time on set with, uh, with Ralph and with Billy and just seeing those two characters playing together and immediately the chemistry that they had, um, it was, you know, I think what you guys see on watching the show and feel that nostalgia, we had that front row seat and it's continued as we've made more seasons of the show, whether it was bringing back the old Cobra Kai, Johnny's old Cobra Kai friends to bringing back Yuji and Tamlin in season three and, and uh, Elizabeth Shue, um, you know, being on set and seeing all of these, all of these actors who we love playing these characters that we love, um, the way uh, they were all able to jump back in, still still embody the characters, but uh, add those years of growth uh, in between and be convincing and be uh, be a pleasure to watch. Thank you guys for those questions there, Andy Cota. Really appreciate you guys. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for participating Thank you, in our MVP series. Thank you. Guys. Yeah. Guys, we got one more live location to go to, and this is kind of special. We're actually going to be going to a dojo, and I believe we're going to have some sort nice. of a demonstration happening. So if you guys would start your camera there at the dojo, and please join us. There you are. How are you doing? All right. Hey, everybody. My name is Master Sergeant Jason Bergeron. Um, I'm here live at the Weichiru Kenyukai World Headquarters Dojo with the Grandmaster Shinjo Kiyohide himself. Um, kind of a unique story here. I grew up in the 80s. I was born in 81, and I did grow up watching your movies, um, but for some reason, I just I had to train in karate, and I ended up with an instructor that had lived in Okinawa in the 1960s, and he sort of motivated me and inspired me to someday go to Okinawa. Eventually, I found a way to get here, and that way was joining the United States Air Force. So I actually enlisted in the Air Force in hopes of coming to Okinawa. And I had found Shinjo Sensei at a seminar in California, and I said, Sensei, I'm going to go to Okinawa and live with you and train there. Um, and I did, but it took me five years to get here. So I had to pull a lot of strings, and I had to persevere and stay very motivated throughout that time. So in 2014, I finally ended up here at the dojo and was training with them since day one. Um, eventually, after five years, the Air Force made me move back to the States for five years. But I stayed motivated, and eventually I found a way to come back. And I've been back here now for one year. Wow. So, we That's are. Tremendous. Amazing. Congratulations. So, I understand you guys have a demonstration for us. Yeah, so this was not planned at all. This actually came up within the last day or two. We put this together so that we could bring you here and join Man the Castle Karate Kid and Cobra Kai and uh, do a little 
a little something special for you. And we'll start with the questions if that's okay. Sure, yeah. absolutely. So I had a few questions. One of them was uh, throughout the Karate Kid movies and even the Cobra Kai series, uh, the, the philosophical aspect of Karate is captured very well, surprisingly. And um, I'm, I've always been curious what the source of that was. Was there somebody kind of teaching you about that or guiding you through that during the process? Um, I'll well, say that well, for, for us, it goes back to the, you know, the very first movie, which was written by Robert Mark Heyman, who was a student of uh, karate. And he modeled the character of, you know, Mr. Miyagi in some ways uh, on his own sensei. And, you know, he's, you know, we've become friendly with him over the years. Ralph knows him, you know, you know, for a lot longer than we do. Um, but it was very important from him, for, from him early on that Miyagi's karate, you know, reflect the, the tenets of Goju Ru and it be based on uh, real karate and, and kind of didn't, you know, wasn't trying to be the most popcorn version of what a martial arts, uh, you know, action could be. Um, at that point in the 80s when there were there was a lot of explosive combinations of a little bit of this and a little bit of that um, and we tried to you know to honor that original intent as as we move forward in terms of how the the karate is designed on the Miyagi side how it's designed on the the Cobra Kai side um, and at times those lines get blurred but uh, but it's really you know it, it's it's important to us to honor the um, you know the intent and the experience of uh, you know what this franchise started out as. Right. Great. Well, Thanks you guys are nice. putting it together. It's really awesome. I understand you have a couple more questions there. Second question in Karate Kid Part Two, chosen. You asked Daniel-san if his teacher taught him to fight with spear, and he says no, and you said too bad. So I'm wondering, did Santo teach you to fight with spear? Uh, well, <clears throat> since Miyagi Do's style was based off of Okinawa and Goju Ryu. Uh, they did. They did have weapons uh, like the bow and the, the kama, the, the nunchaku, uh, the sai, which is what I use to uh, stab the floor in front of Daniel's face. Uh, the tonfa, the the shinai, which you guys know, which is the the bamboo sword, and the boken, which is a wooden sword. Uh, the tanto, which is a short blade, and the wa waki zashi is a katana. So. The answer to your question, yes, for Chosa. <laughs> okay. Thank you. The last question for, uh, for you guys that were in the Karate Kid series, um, did you ever imagine that in 30 years, all of this would be resurfacing to where it is today? No. I will say this, but I answered that quickly, no, because I, I, um, on one hand, I would say I never thought it would... Um, I mean, some of it came from it being so precious to me and so respected and how the Karate Kid film and the, and, uh, the Karate Kid franchise had become bigger than, than uh, even the actors in it. And, and the car it just became, um, you know, a part of people's lives, a part of their childhood uh, around the world. So it just felt to go back to that well uh, would probably, you know, there's two, the, the risk uh, outweighed the reward, at least when I was hearing ideas that were, you know, that would open that door. So I had, I never thought it would, um, would find its way. I will say this much. I never felt ever, because I've walked in these shoes for, since 1984, that it wasn't relevant to somebody at some time. Like when someone says to me, oh, how do you feel now that for 30 years this wasn't around and now it's back? It was, oh, it, listen, for me, it was always around. You know? <laughs> so it never went away. The relevance never went away uh, as far as what it meant to people and what that, those films meant to people. But to come to the service to tell new stories going forward and with John, Josh and Hayden and, the, and all the writers and, and the collaborators on this show are able to do and what we all do together, um, I didn't foresee that uh, as, as, as something that was come to fruition, certainly not at this level. So this is as uh, sweet and as good as it gets. Guys, okay. thank you so much for those questions. I understand we have a demo.
everybody. Thank you so much from Okinawa, Japan, to the team uh, Cobra Kai and to the USO. Arigatou gozaimasu. Sayonara. Hey. Sayonara. Hey. Arigatou. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. you guys are welcome at the All Valley Tournament in any time. I need to recruit a few of those folks. Good, <laughs> good day not to be a board. I can tell you that. <laughs> Very cool. Guys, you know, I can't thank you enough for uh, joining us here on the MVP series. And Ralph, if you wouldn't mind, on behalf of the entire panel, giving some words of support and encouragement to our troops who are watching us. Absolutely. Um, listen, we this has been a, a joy for us, and it's uh, – it fills our, our heart and soul and, and minds to, to have the opportunity to send you all our love and support and thank you for what you do every day um, for us, uh, wishing uh, only uh, happiness and, and health and uh, safe return home um, from us uh, to you. I thank you uh, uh, so, so much. Well, we really appreciate you guys joining us today. And we are being joined by 15 installations across the Pacific region in Okinawa, Japan, Guam, and South Korea. Uh, Hayden, John, Ralph, Yuji, thank you so much. And Josh, and uh, you can check in on future USO MVP sessions by going to uso.org slash MVP. Guys, thank you so much. Congratulations on the continued success of Cobra Kai and to everybody out there, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you on down the road. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, everybody.